In this video today, I'm gonna to show you how you can go out and create one Bricks Builder template that can output either Gutenberg content or Bricks Builder content depending on which one you want to use for that particular post or page. Now, if you're not sure if this is something that you might like to use in your own website, then definitely stick around to see how it's done because you might actually benefit from doing something like this. It might make managing your website a little bit easier. Now, I've also wrote an entire blog post that I'm gonna leave a link to in the description below if you'd prefer to read. It's gonna complement today's video and I might cover some stuff in there that I don't put into the video. So if this is something you wanna implement, I would definitely Definitely recommend consuming both of those pieces of content. So the way that we're going to go through how to do this today is we're going to jump over from my website here to this staging install and we're going to go through some steps to identify where this could be useful. So here on my staging website, I have this home page that I've designed here and this is using Bricks Builder. So the way that I created my home page is exactly how you would imagine. I went up to my dashboard, I went to my pages. And you can see this is currently my front page, which means it's my home page in WordPress. So I had the page there, I went edit. And you can see there's no Gutenberg content here because for my home page, I want to design the content area using Bricks Builder. So I went edit with Bricks. And then I designed the page like you would imagine. I dragged in sections, containers, blocks, and designed it like so. So that's my home page and that's how I set it up. Then after I set up my homepage, I went and designed my blog posts. So if we go back to our dashboard and I click to go to the front end, if I go to articles, which takes me to my blog page and we click into one of my blog posts, we land on our blog post and the appearance that it has here currently is the default design that the Bricks Builder theme comes with. So it's not the nicest, you can see the content's a bit too wide for my liking. So I wanna go ahead and design a template for my blog posts. So to do that, I would go back to my dashboard and then I would go to bricks and templates and then I would go add new and I would call this single uh, template and then over here, I would select that it's template type. I wanna apply this template to my single posts and then I would publish that and edit it with bricks. Now I've already gone ahead and done that to save time. So if we just get out of that, it's this one here. So you can see if I go edit, so I've called it single default. The template type is single because I want it to affect my single posts and pages and custom post types. And then here, if we click edit with bricks, this is the design. So not to get too into the weeds about what exactly I've added to the page, the main points that we're going to go through for our design here is that I've designed this using Bricks Builder. It's a Bricks template and it has this element here. So this is a post content element. You can see up here. So I just went up to elements, post content, and then I dragged this element into the page. Once I had done that, the data source is set to WordPress, which means that it outputs our content from Gutenberg. So with that done, I've designed this here, but it's obviously not affecting our blog post. So how do we go and apply that? We need to set conditions for that template to output for. So I actually wanna have this apply to, let's just say all my blog posts. If I wanted to do that, I could go up to here and go settings, template settings, and then conditions. And I could set this to apply uh, for example, if the post type is equal to posts, so only my blog posts. So I'd go ahead and save that. And then back here, if I reload the page, you can see now that's applying to all my single posts and it looks a lot better. If I go edit post, you can see that this is the Gutenberg content that I've wrote here. So this content is being output in this element here where data source is WordPress. And of course we set the conditions here for that template. It's affecting our posts. Now, if I go to my homepage, right? The homepage is still intact because I've only specified again for this template to apply where the post type is a post. But as I was going through and building my website, I was like, you know what? A lot of the time I really just want to write my content in Gutenberg but then I also wanna have the option to design pages using Bricks Builder, like my homepage, my sales pages, and the, and the pages that I'm basically wanting to spend more time designing. If we jump over to my live website, you can see my homepage here, I designed that using Bricks Builder. If we go to another page, like my tools page, 
This is still a page, but I've just wrote this in Gutenberg because it didn't really need a whole design inside a Bricks Builder. I, I would just rather go and write this content in Gutenberg because I can write a lot faster inside Gutenberg. If we go to something like my About page, this again is just using Gutenberg because I just find I can put out content a lot faster and easier using Gutenberg versus writing in Bricks. And if I go Edit Page, you can see that this is all just Gutenberg content. So coming back to here, when I had gone and applied this template to just my blog post and my homepage was working how it needed to work, I was like, you know what? I actually just want to have this apply to every single post type in my website and I'll just use Gutenberg. But then I also want to have the option to design using Bricks Builder. And that's why I'm making today's video. So this is how we can go ahead and do that. So up here, I can just collapse that and I can set this under settings and then template settings and conditions. And instead of only applying this to my blog post where the post type is posts, I'm gonna get rid of that and I'm gonna add a condition to apply this to my entire website. So if I go save, now this is applying to all the single posts, all my single custom post types, and that includes my single pages. And so if we go back to our website and I reload this home page. You can see now my homepage is gone because this template is overwriting the content that we designed in Bricks Builder for my homepage. If I go edit with Bricks, you can see that the content's still here inside a Bricks Builder that I designed using Bricks Builder, but it's not outputting on the page here because if we go back to our template, our template doesn't actually output Bricks content. So how would we go and do that? So what we could do is add another post content element. So I'll go up to here and I'll search for post content and click here. And then I'll drag that up to the top because I don't want this to be in a section or a container. I just want this to output on the page with whatever I design inside of the Bricks Builder content because I'll be adding my sections and containers inside of Bricks Builder. So I don't really need to wrap this um, element in its own container. So I have here, let's just give this a name. So post content bricks. And then where we were outputting Gutenberg down here, I'll just call this Gutenberg. So now that we've done that for this post content element, instead of data source WordPress, we're going to click and do bricks. So let's go ahead and save that. And then let's go back to our homepage and let's reload. And you can see now all the content that we designed in Bricks Builder. So back here where the data source for this element is bricks right at the top of the page that is outputting all our content there. And if we go right to the bottom, we can see this here. And this is, if we go back here, everything underneath. So it's this hero section. Now the reason it's not outputting the date or my picture is because under here I have conditions set on them, but it's irrelevant for today's video. But the main thing that we need to focus on is it's outputting the bricks content first, and then under it, it's outputting the other content there. So with that working the way that it is now, that's obviously not what we want. We want to be able to design our page using Bricks Builder for the content or Gutenberg. So if we're using Bricks up here, we don't want to output these two elements down there. So how can we go and do that? So the way that we can do that is by using conditions and the has blocks function that WordPress gives us. So we could click on this and come over to conditions and we could add a condition. And here we could go all the way down to dynamic data. And then we could open up with some curly brackets and write echo and then do has blocks. And we're gonna go through what this is in a second, but let's just finish this off. If has blocks equals true. Now let's go over to the WordPress docs because this is an actual WordPress function in WordPress core. And you can see this function here gets the current posts, the global post ID, and determines whether or not the post has blocks. And when we're in here and we're writing content in Gutenberg, Gutenberg refers to each of these things that we add into the Gutenberg editor as blocks. That's why when we go up to here for the plus icon, it says toggle block inserter. If we go over to here, blocks, these are all blocks. So this function, if we go back to our template, when Bricks Builder tries to render a post or a page that we've applied this template to, it'll go and get to this template and then goes to the conditions. And it says, does this current post or page have any Gutenberg blocks? If it's true, then show this. Otherwise, don't output it on the page. So if we run through and save this and then go to our homepage and reload the page, 
you can see that disappears because if we go edit page here for our home page, there's no blocks in here. And so it's not being output on the page. So the last thing that we need to do is just apply this same condition down here. So I could click here and go add a condition here down to dynamic data, paste that in there. If has blocks equals true, output this, otherwise don't save. Go back here and reload the page. And now there's nothing output here between the footer and the content that we design in Bricks Builder. Now the next thing that I wanna go through is that if we go back to our template, this element here that outputs our Bricks content, what happens to that if we're on our blog posts where we're using Gutenberg and we're not using Bricks? So let's go ahead and have a look at the code, but we first need to get a reference. Let's click on this, the section head hero, and I can see that this has the CSS class page header single. So if we go back here, right click and inspect element, and we have a look for that class, which is here, you can see that that is the very first section in the main HTML element that Bricks inserts content in, uh, Bricks inserts, Brick, oh my God, Bricks inserts content into. So there's no HTML uh, tag here that's empty. So it's just good to know that when the page goes to render, Bricks checks if there's content in the content area built with Bricks. And if there isn't, it literally does not do anything. It doesn't render anything in our HTML. So with all that set up, let's go through and pretend that I'm going in and adding content to my website with this template set up the way it is. So you can get an idea of how it works and what we've actually achieved. So let's go back into our admin area. I'm gonna close everything just so it's a bit easier to follow along and I'll get out of that. So here I am and let's say I wanna go and create a new page and I just wanna use Gutenberg and write some content. So I could go to pages and I could go add new and maybe I need to add a terms and conditions page on my website. So I'll go terms and conditions and ignore the gray. That's just something that I've set up for, it's very specific to my website, but you get the idea. So I've wrote that content in Gutenberg here. So let's go to publish. And then if I view this on the front end, so have a look at that there. You can see now it's just in my nice, simple design that I wanted to output using Gutenberg. Okay, so that's all looking good. Now let's say I wanna go out and design a really nice about page. So I will go to new and then page. And then instead of using Gutenberg here, I'm gonna use bricks. So here I'll call this about me and we'll go publish. And then I'll go edit with bricks. And now we're designing in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and choose a bricks pre-built template just so we can move a bit faster here. So I'll go community and let's just choose one of these. Uh, that's a single post, this home. So I'll go insert template and then I'll go save. So now if we view this on the front end, this is what our About Us page looks like. So we have one post type, the post type is page, but we have that flexibility of designing full width using Bricks Builder, like that for the content area. But then we also have the option to use Gutenberg, which is what we did previously with the other page that we just uh, built the terms and conditions page. So it allows us to do the two different types of designs for the one post type, but it's all managed through the one bricks template. Now the last example that I'll show you is my opt-in pages and how I actually have them set up in my own website. So if I go to my website, so I'll go dashboard, and then we go down to funnel kit and funnels. If I click into this here, 21 days email course, you can see that this opt-in funnel has three different steps. So this is also the post type over here. So one post type is called opt-in, and then the second post type is opt-in confirmation. And these last two steps are both the same post type. So if I go ahead and view this opt-in here, this is full width. So I've edited this using Bricks Builder. So if I go edit with Bricks, that is edited with Bricks there. If I go to here, please check your inbox, and I open that one up and we'll also open up this last one here. You can see I've chose to use Gutenberg here because it's a very simple thing. It's like you've just filled out a form, go and double opt-in. And then when they click the link in that double opt-in email, I send them to the third step, which is this one here. You're on the wait list and it's just a, a bit of confirmation. So I don't need to go and design these pages. I can just go into uh, Gutenberg and write the content like that. But let's just say for this success page, I actually wanted to go and later on design it using Bricks Builder. All I need to do is go up to here, edit with Bricks. 
design it using bricks. So I'll go like that. And then over here, we could add a heading. I'm a heading. I'm not going to go through and do it. And now I just need to migrate the content from Gutenberg into here. So back here for this, I'll go edit. And then I just get the content from here and I will just cut that update. And then back in here, I would go ahead and add it. So we'll just do uh, rich text. We'll add that in there. And then I could go and paste that in there, save. And then I have more flexibility to design it however I want using Bricks Builder. If we go back and now reload this page, you can see now this is converted over to using Bricks Builder. Now, the last thing that I'll go through, and it's a very important one, is the following. If we go back to our template, which was, I've closed it, so we'll go back to dashboard, and then we go to bricks and templates, and then we edit it again, it's this one here, so I go edit with bricks. If we go back into our condition over here, so remember we're using has blocks, it checks if any blocks exist inside the Gutenberg editor. So that's a very important thing to remember because if we don't migrate all the content out of Gutenberg when we're designing that new design in Bricks Builder, then has blocks would actually be true. So I'll show you what I mean. So let's go back, so many tabs open, get rid of that, so here we are. I'm gonna close all the other ones just so it's a bit easier to follow along. There, so you're on the wait list. So if we left one block in this content area, so we just forgot to delete that and we go update, has blocks is now true. So if we go and view this on the front end now and reload, you can see we have our bricks content up the top here, but if we go down now, cause we have that one block in there, this one here, now this is true and everything's being output on the page again. Now, the reason that I'm telling you this is because sometimes you might want to leave the content here inside of Gutenberg, but then swap over to using Bricks Builder to design the content area, but not have to delete this because maybe you want to come back to it, or maybe you just like having content in Gutenberg for later on. So there is a way that you can actually go out and do that, and it's by doing the following. If you go to my website and go to articles up the top, or go to my blog page, you wanna look for this blog post here, set a Bricks Builder template using PHP. And if you're watching this in the future, you can go on to search up here and just search for it there. So there it is there, it's the last blog post that I published yesterday. If we click into that, this blog post here covers something that Bricks Builder calls their scoring system. And so how it works is it's using this PHP filter here, Bricks, Screen Conditions and Scores, and it looks like this. Now you will need to be a little bit comfortable with PHP, but it's actually not very complex. Like you, you can basically copy and paste the code and get your head around how it works, especially if you read this blog post here. And I will have a video posted on my YouTube channel over the next few days that goes through how this works. It is quite a big uh, blog post here. Uh, so it is all documented there if you want to go look at it now It might take me a little bit longer to actually create the video just because it is uh, There's a lot that I do want to cover uh, But I definitely recommend going and checking this out and using the table of contents uh, I go through everything there if we go down to how to find the score of the template because it's not Really apparent how you go and find the ID so I run through how to do that We also look at the output of the function uh, the variables and their values and, and their data structures and how they how they ba how, they, how they basically work and what we can do with them. So I would definitely recommend checking out the blog post there and definitely look out for that video. And just a reminder that everything that we went through in today's video has been documented on this blog post here that I'll leave a link to in the description below. It is a really good blog post and it should be quite easy to follow along and sort of see at maybe a slower pace how things are working. Everything has screenshots in there and I've put a lot of effort into it so hopefully uh, that's another way to learn and it's also a good reference point to come back to and just see how something was done in particular and having to find a certain point in a video so i will leave both of those links there and i'll see you in my next video